Hello everyone, I'm MMRL fan, and welcome to the second remade episode of Coaches of Amtrak. This is the series where we'll talk about the Coaches of Amtrak. Let's get into this episode, the Superliners. The first Superliner 1 cars entered service in February 1979, with deliveries continuing through 1981. Amtrak designed the cars to both long-distance and short-distance trains in the western United States. The first permanent assignment in October 1979 was to the Empire Builder. Superliner 2's delivery began in 1993. The additional cars enabled the retirement of aging high-level cars and the assignment of Superliners to trains in the eastern United States. Tunnel clearances prevented their use on the Northeast Corridor. Conventional single-level cars made up most of Amtrak's inherited fleet, but it also included 73 high-level cars from the Santa Fe. Michael Armand, who worked at the design firm Lewis T. Clarence Associates, called that when Amtrak issued a request for a proposal in 1973 for a totally new passenger car, it was presumed that the design would be at bi-level. Amtrak selected the car proposal. The design was finished in by mid-1974, and Pullman Standard won the contract. Amtrak ordered 235 Superliner 1 cars from Pullman Standard on April 2, 1975. The order then consisted of 120 coaches, 55 sleepers, 34 diners, and 26 lounges. Amtrak soon increased the order to 284 cars. It added 30 coaches, 15 sleepers, 5 diners, and deleted one lounge. The initial order cost $143.6 million. With the additional cars and other payments, the cost rose to $250 million. A public unveiling took place at Union Station in Chicago on October 11, 1979. The following day, the Shawnee had the distinct of being the first Superliner accident. A collision with the Illinois Central Gulf Railroad freight train at Harvey, Illinois, which claimed the lives of two crew members of the freight train. Amtrak's first choice for the Superliner assignment had been the Floridian, but two years' delay in the delivery scrapped these plans. Amtrak then next turned to the Empire Builder route, where the winters are harsh and the traditional steam-heated equipment often broke down, causing Amtrak to cancel service. The Empire Builder became the first long-distance train to use superliners, and the first train permanently assigned on them, October 28, 1979. With the Empire Builder in operation, Amtrak began to re-equip the remaining long-distance trains in the West. The second permanent assignment Superliner train was the Desert Wind, which gained coaches on June 30th, 1980. The San Francisco Zephyr followed on July 7th, 1980. Later, the Southwest Chief was the first train to receive Superliner 2 sleeping cars in September 1993. Amtrak estimated that re-equipping a train with Superliners boosted ridership on it by 25%. The last car of the order, a sleeper delivered in July 1981, was also the last car ever built by Pullman, and was named in the honor of the company's founder, George Mornheim Pullman. Amtrak ordered 140 Superliner 2 cars from Bombardier in 1991. The order consisted of 55 sleeping cars, 38 coaches, 20 diners, 15 lounges, and 12 transition dormitory cars. The initial order cost $340 million, and included the option for 39 additional cars. In late 1993, Amtrak ex exercised the option for 55 cars at a total cost of $110 million, bringing the total order of Superliner 2 cars to 194. The option included 10 dining cars, 10 lounges, and 35 trans dorms. From where I built the cars in Bear, Vermont. Now let's talk about specifications. Superliners generally resembled the high-level design, though at 16 feet 2 inches, they were 8 inches taller. The Superliners also used head-end power for heating and electricity, which is more reliable than the steam heating used by the high-levels. Initially, the cars could not work east of Chicago because of limited overhead clearances, but by the 1980s, many eastern railroads had raised clearances on their tracks to permit double-stack container trains. To this day, low tunnel clearances prevent their use on the Northeast Corridor. Superliner 1 cars ride on Wagon Union MD-76 trucks, which require more frequent overhauls than the compared domestic designs. The Superliner 2 ride on GSI-G70 outboard bearing trucks, also found on the Horizon single-level cars. Both models have a maximum speed of 100 miles an hour. As built, Superliner coaches could carry 62 passengers in the upper level and 15 passengers in the lower level. The lower level's capacity would later be reduced to 12, 
the total capacity presented a small increase over the high-level coaches, which lacked seating on the lower level. Seating on the upper and lower levels is a 2 by 2 with climbing seats. There are overhead luggage racks in the upper level and a luggage storage area on the lower level. There are also four toilets per car coach on the lower level. Two-piece windows are located at each seat row. Each window is 24 by 66 inches. Integrated blinds were rejected in favor of curtains on maintenance grounds. Full height windows were incorporated into the lounge cars. Eleven Superliner 1 coaches were built as snack coaches. These coaches retained the 62 seats on the upper level, but removed the lower level seats in favor of a snack bar and lounge seats. Five Superliner 2 coaches were rebuilt in 1996 and 1997 as family coaches or kiddie cars. These cars featured a children's play area on the lower level instead of seating and were assigned on the coastal starlight. Amtrak rebuilt these five cars again in 2008-2009 as arcade cars with video game machines in the lower level. These cars were converted once more in 2015 to provide business class service on the coastal starlight. Pullman Standard built 70 Superliner 1 sleeping cars. Bombardier built 49 Standard Superliner 2 sleeping cars and 6 Deluxe sleepers. The standard sleeper liner sleeper car contains 14 roomettes, 5 bedrooms, and a family room, and an accessible bedroom. The deluxe sleeping cars contain 4, four roomettes, 10 bedrooms, a family room, and an accessible bedroom. Pullman Standard and Barbara each built 25 dedicated lounge cars, dubbed sightseer lounges. Windows wrap upward onto the ceiling and provide lateral views of the scenery along the train's routes. The upper level contains a mix of seating options. At one end, there are eight tables, each seating four passengers. In the center is a lounge area with a wet bar and several groups of seats. At the other end, there are swivel chairs. The lower level contains a bathroom and additional tables, and a snack bar. As well, the lounges have seating for 73. The cars were built with an electrical piano on the lower level, which was since been removed. In addition to the sightseer lounges, Amtrak converted five Superliner 1 dining cars to lounge cars in 1998 for use on the auto train. These cars are distinguished from the sightseer lounge cars by their conventional windows. The dining cars can seat a maximum of 72 passengers on the lower level. The dining cars can seat a maximum of 72 passengers on the upper level in tables of four. The galley occupies the lower level. A dumbwaiter is used to bring food and drink to, to the upper level, as well as to return dishes, glasses, and cutlery for the, for washing. Amtrak rebuilt 17 Superliner 1 dining cars as dining room lounges in late 2000. Dove the Cross Country Cafe, they were intended to reduce food service losses by replacing a both a traditional dining car and a sightseer lounge on long-distance trains. One end of the car was converted into a cafe area, with tables and a small serving area near the stairs to the kitchen. The other side remained dedicated to traditional dining seats, but the standard 2x2 tables were replaced by booths. As part of the Superliner 2 order, Barrier built 47 transition dorm cars. These cars had two purposes, to provide sleeping accommodations for both train personnel and to provide access to single-level equipment from both bi-level Superliners. Most transition dormitories have 16 roommates on the upper level, with an accessible bedroom and small crew lounge on the lower level. Bathrooms and showers are located on both levels. At one end of the car is a top level end door. At the other end, there's a staircase to the end door on the lower level. On some trains, Amtrak makes the roomettes closest to the upper level door available for sale to passengers. That wraps up this remade episode of Coaches of Amtrak. Thank you to all the sites and sources on screen for the information, photos, and clips used in this video. Please tell me your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. With that, I'll talk to you guys in the next video where I'll talk about the Horizon Coaches. Bye.